In today's video, we're discussing the top 10 strange and bizarre signs that you may be in a trauma bonded relationship. There's a lot of confusion around exactly what a trauma bond is and how it affects the person who is in the trauma bond because these relationships are not like normal love relationships. Also, you can establish a trauma bond to anyone if you are being subjected to the cycles of abuse, meaning if you are subjected to the cycles of love bombing and being very nice, loving and considerate, then being subjected to devaluing cycles, meaning you are subjected to that same person being cruel, neglectful, abusive, and mean. If you go through these types of cycles with anyone, uh, you are in a relationship with. You can absolutely develop a trauma bond to that person. It does not only happen to people in a romantic relationship with the abusive person. So this could happen between a parent and a child, even an adult child, uh, siblings, your own children, friends, boss and employee relationships, among others, not just romantic partnerships. Um, usually there will be a power imbalance between the two people in the trauma bond also. Trauma bonded relationships are developed from being um, consistently exposed to these alternating cycles, hot, cold, nice, mean, kind, cruel. And what ends up happening is you develop a literal addiction to the abusive person, but of course you are not aware of this fact. However, a trauma bond is indeed a very real and literal addiction that we develop to the other person. If you're new to this channel, I'd like to take a quick moment and welcome you and invite you to please subscribe and be sure and hit that notification bell because I put out new videos every week. Also, if you are interested in private one-on-one -on -one narcissistic abuse recovery coaching with me, please visit my website or send me an email. Both are linked in the description below. So now let's move into some identifying signs that could mean you are in a trauma bonded relationship. These are not in any order and there may, there are certainly more signs than these 10, but this should give you a good idea if indeed you are in one. And the first thing is if you don't really like this person, but you stay for reasons you cannot really articulate or understand. Most people in trauma bonded relationships, when they really think about it, will see that this is not a good match, that you have very different interests, that you have very different opinions about things that are important, and that much of the behavior you are being subjected to is not like other relationships you may have had. So if you are in a relationship where you do not really like or possibly don't even respect the person you are in the relationship with, it's time to take a deeper look at and uh, see if this may be a trauma bond in reality. Next, another telltale sign that you may be in a trauma bond is repetitive, continual fights about the exact same thing. Issues never seem to get resolved and because of this, you and this person fight about the same topics over and over and over. Another sign is if you tell other people, friends or family, about the way you are being treated by this person and they are pretty shocked and do not understand why you would stay in any form of a relationship with someone like that. Others may display concern and confusion about this so-called relationship. You tend to find yourself complaining to others about the distress you are experiencing in this relationship, but then find yourself defending this person and making excuses for them and why they might be behaving like they do. Some common examples of defenses I hear about all the time are they had a really rough and possibly abusive childhood or they didn't really get a fair shake in life. So therefore the abuse they are subjecting you to is justified. Anytime you find yourself defending someone's abusive behavior towards you is a very bad sign that you are likely trauma bonded to that person. Next, you have a fear of leaving this person or breaking off this relationship. 
Something about them makes you worry that you won't be able to make it without them. Whether the abusive person actually verbalizes this to you or not, you will have a resistance to leaving or breaking up with this person. And for the life of you, you do not understand why. Many times a person traumatically bonded uh, with another person will have tried to have left before only to find themselves going back because they you know just couldn't do it when usually what they do not understand is that they are in a literal withdrawal because of the distance from this person and the confusion that always accompanies leaving a person you are trauma bonded to. Most of us who are trying to break off a trauma bonded relationship will experience crippling levels of something called cognitive dissonance which basically means you are you become very confused if the decision you made is the right one you start to doubt yourself that this was the right decision because you are trying to reconcile the cognitive dissonance you have that manifests from being exposed to these completely different versions of the person in question you are struggling uh, with deciding whether or not this person is really good or bad. And when we are in that kind of confusion and distress, the addicted mind and brain only wants relief from the distress, which means the majority of the time the victim will conclude that the person is actually a really good person who has some bad moments. However, if you are trauma bonded to a malignant narcissist, the exact, the exact opposite is true, meaning they are a bad person underneath the cycles of being nice that you experience from them from time to time. The cycles of being nice to you are just a manipulation tactic to keep you confused. They do not have good or honorable character underneath it all, no matter what they say. Number six, you are in love with the fantasy of what the relationship could be or should be or in your mind has the potential to become. We are in love with or paralyzed by the hope that, that of what could be. Many times we will conclude um, if we had only tried harder, this relationship could transform into the fantasy that you've had in your head. However, if you're with someone with full-blown NPD or God forbid, a malignant narcissist or a sociopath or a psychopath, there isn't any possibility this relationship will get better. I have have said time and time again that the most destructive or emotion uh, destructive emotion or belief that a victim of narcissistic abuse can have is that there is hope that that hope will keep you stuck and no one knows this more than the narcissist themselves um, that's why they expose you to these alternating cycles of behavior because they know this will confuse you because they know if they were horrible and abusive to you all of the time you would leave. Number seven, you find yourself continually trying to explain basic human decency to this person in, in hopes that you will finally reach that empathetic part of their heart or that logical part of their brain where they finally understand and have a life-changing light bulb moment. And many times this person might even agree and express that uh, they do indeed understand what you are telling them. However, when the time comes for them to implement these new found realizations, they only let you down time and time and time again. The behavior never changes in the long run. Number eight, you would not want anyone else you love and care about to be in a relationship like this. For example, if one of your children got into a relationship like this and was exposed uh, to this reprehensible behavior, you would be horrified and would categorically not want this person to tolerate this relationship and would try to influence them to leave. If this happens when you reflect about the relationship you are in, this is a huge sign that you are in a trauma bonded relationship. Number nine, 
If you do manage to break away from this relationship, you find yourself in deep distress and start ruminating and thinking about only the good, wonderful times you had with this person during the love bombing cycles. You experience a type of abuse amnesia and only concentrate and romanticize the good times. This is a big red flag that this is a trauma bond. And lastly, if you find yourself lying to the people in your life that love and care about you, about the depths of the abuse and the disrespect you are being subjected to, not only do you make excuses for this person's behavior, but you also just flat out lie or maybe even gaslight yourself about the abuse. One of the ways we can do this is by believing that, yeah, this person is nasty and cruel to me, but that's just the way they show love. The only, they only do that because they want me to become a better person or something ridiculous like that. This is a massive sign that you are in a trauma bonded relationship. Okay, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Also, follow me on my other social media platforms. They're all linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, everyone.